Hello, welcome to FDI Takeover. I am your co-host, Alex Smith. And I am your other co-host, Karen Ryan. And together we are FDI Takeover! We've been working on it. Yes, Karen, I think it's been going pretty good. What do you think? It's been going really great, Alex. I mean, just a little practice here and there. Your voice, my voice, in unison together. We're going to get it down for y'all. Yeah, I think we're getting better at it. We we actually have a very, very special guest with us today who is a dear friend of mine, ex-coworker, mentor, coach, everything, Matt Savrick. Thank you so much for joining us today on FDI Takeover. Welcome. I'm so excited. I need to learn that ditty. Can you teach me? FDI Takeover. (laughs) All right, I'll practice in the shower. Good to see you. Thank you for having me. I know. I'm so grateful that you're here. And just to share with the audience who's watching, I mentioned that Matt is a dear friend of mine. Uh, We used to work together at Headspace, and he has been working in high growth tech startups all over the country for I don't know I'll let him fill in the blank but he has worked for mental health organizations he's a huge advocate of mental health he is an executive leadership coach mindset and accountability coach for people he just started his coaching business and I want him to share more about that he is an amazing friend I know that you are an amazing husband and and father from what I hear as well and so I'll just turn it over to you to introduce yourself a little bit more and what you do for work and what you love just in general yes first of all a deep deep debt of gratitude for having me thank you Um, i think you have it right but probably (laughs) backwards what's most important is my family and i've been blessed with the opportunity to put that first and foremost so let's start there uh my beautiful wife ashley who I know y'all know. Yes. Maybe maybe we'll host her here one yes. day. Yes, yes, we would love <laughs> that. I think that. Bring the great. whole family. Bring the whole family. <laughs> yes. Uh, two kids, a uh, daughter, Sky. she's three, and a son, Stone, he's one. So he just started walking, which is um, a whole new world. Yes, certainly. literally. But yes, an executive coach, that's what I do for fun. Um, and it's the most inspiring work that I can do. More specifically, my wife and I founded Savrick Enterprises with the core thesis of giving away almost all of our work. That's what makes us different, right? So it's uh, it's so important to us. It's written to all of our contracts. Buy one, give one. So any client that we have, they can then gift our services to a charity and nonprofit of their choice. So that's what we're up to. I that's love that. Wonderful. That is wonderful. So that business you brought together. Can you just tell us a little bit about your executive coaching? For those people that don't understand it. Yeah. Most coaches buff and tweak and polish. That's not the business we're in. Mm -hmm. We're looking for deep transformation, which is probably scary for a lot of people. But uh, we are positive catalysts in people's lives. So if you're looking for minor tweaks, I have a litany of coaches I could recommend. This is really about um, investigating all aspects of your life. Um, and potentially changing them, right? Shining a bright white light on what you're up to and um, thinking about those things, putting great focus on this notion of your life and taking ownership. That's why I'm so inspired to be here at FDI Takeover. Yes. What I notice with a lot of my clients, a lot of people are talking incessantly about what they're doing. Almost nobody is acting. So I help people jump into action. That's wonderful. It's definitely a topic that we talk about all the time, jumping the action. You have a lot of people that are in the background chatting, 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 but what's really happening to make those solutions? What are people really doing to make a difference in their life, take that action, that accountability, and that discipline? So, yeah, yeah awesome. It's hard. It Let, is. Let's be clear. This is this is hard work. Definitely. Um, and I think we what we see out there, um, whether it's movies, social media, et cetera, we're just littered with this notion of shortcuts, and there are no shortcuts. It's It's work day in and day out. And we'll talk about some of the strategy and tactics, but I'm so honored to be here. Thank you. Thank you, man. Oh, we are so grateful. And obviously we go way back. Matt and I were able to build a lot of things together in our career. And I'm just so excited to see you step into what was once a side hustle to be full blown, everything that you want to do for yourself going forward. And so are you typically working with 
you said executives. So what is it about executive executives and why would they necessarily need a coach in this day and age? Like, what are you seeing are some of the biggest challenges that people who are trying to be a leader, or maybe even men who are trying to step into, you know, their full potential? Like, what are some of the things that you're noticing and, and why is it important for them to, to continue to work on all the other areas of their life? Yeah, I think that's the right question. So thank you, thank you for serving it out. Let's see, um, and, I'll, and I'll paint with some broad brushstrokes. I mean, there's nuance in all this, but um, from my experience across the different clients that I have, um, it's lonely as you climb the proverbial ladder. Um, and 80% of executives, leaders, have imposter syndrome, which is real, we all do, right? Um, and leaders do too. And it doesn't necessarily have to be an executive. This could be a leader, whether they're a people manager or they just want to be their own spark and they kind of drive the culture forward. But what I see is people lack a confidential sounding board, right? And, and it's, it's as simple as that. I'll kind of leave it at that full stop. Um, I tinker with this notion of deploying a program. It's like, what is the six-week program? And then what happens at the end of that? I think ma magic happens when you sit with somebody and there's this one plus one equals three where you're able to speak openly about what you're thinking, what you're feeling, how to improve yourself, and look in the mirror. I know we talked about looking in the mirror, which is it's, it's terrifying when you don't practice that. Um, and I'll talk about all the mirror looking that I do um, just through all the life experiences that I've had. And um, it's, it's not so much what you see per se, that awareness. The second step is compassion. What do you do thereafter? Right, and there's only two steps. Those are the two steps. Awareness, develop deep awareness consistently, develop that muscle, and then compassion, self-compassion. Everybody overlooks that one. That's the most important thing. And then compassion for others. Yeah, that just really brought um, chills to me when you were when you were speaking because compassion, loving yourself and forgiving yourself and having that kindness. When you're ready to really change, it's again taking that action and, and, and going forward with it. And when you have someone like yourself yeah. or, you know, who can help you develop that and actually change your life, it has to be life-changing. It's not just temporary. It's not just a six-week, a 90-day run. Let's do something fad. That's just what the norm is. That's what people are doing. But to actually change someone's life, to give them their life back, that's beautiful. Yeah. I have, I have a funny story. As you all know, um, I was out of town for 10 years. I left home. This is home, South Florida. I love that. I'm out of town for 10 <laughs> of, years. Yeah, I did the same thing. Bye. Yes. I'm back. Uh, and I came back and people said, at first I was like, what? But now I think I understand, at least through talking through it. People said, you look the same. And I think that that's like a testament to the fact of these healthy practices, right? Um, there's no secret. Walking outside works, right? Getting sun early works. Drinking water works. Calling your mom works. Like those are, those are the core tenets. Uh, and life is about giving. I really believe that. You might not think you have a lot to give, but you have everything to give. The way I see it is if you wake up relatively pain-free and you have the ability to choose how you want to spend your days, you're, you're better off than almost everybody that's ever lived on this planet, right? F furthermore, probably 5 billion people on this planet don't have those things that I just described. So I think that's, that's kind of tied into gratitude. And I listened to some of your first episodes. I know that was a core tenant. Um, but this, this, again, is a muscle that you have to develop. And there are no shortcuts. I think the, wor no. the world loves this notion of what's the next supplement? What's Instant the next gratification. Yeah, yes. right? What's the next diet fad? What, yeah. What's the next Peloton-esque thing that I'm going to do? Exactly. The principles of mindfulness, heartfulness, mindset, physical fitness have stood the test of time. And it's like engaging in those. So you just have to fucking do it, right? Yeah. Get, it, get out there yes. and do it. Um, FTI. I, FDI. Yeah. <laughs> yeah one, one, one quick tangent. Yes. Uh, I love, I, no, we, we go on tangents all the time. Let's go. Let's go. It's like, it's, that's why we have a podcast. Yeah. Yes. Thank, yeah. I think, I, I, talk about like honoring you two. You actually did it. Like we are in your studio. This is amazing. You 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 did it. I know a lot of people talk about it. Um, here we are doing it. So we be uh, about it. Yeah. 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 I was in a fraternity. We thought it was a great idea to do something with this beautiful backyard behind the fraternity house. And um, we had all of the pledges build us a basketball court. I mean, all the brothers chipped in and participated. The next semester, we were all excited. We have a basketball court. People didn't touch it, right? There was, there was such a barrier to entry to just get outside. 
And I thought, you know what? Nobody is acting. Nobody is jumping in. What can I do to jumpstart this? So I think about this, and you'll see some themes throughout, right? How do we break this down to the smallest increment for people to get outside and get going? And I think this is rather apropos as a consequence of the FDI takeover. Hmm. Um, but it was, let's go. <laughs> it was it was just about getting your fucking shoes on. Yeah. So I would bang on all the brothers' doors in the fraternity house and say, "Get your fucking shoes on." And that was get the trigger. Get out of bed. Get out of bed. Yeah. Talk about get, this. Put your shoes on. Right. Put, put your shoes on. And and I still. I mean, I've dialed it down. Maybe I should say, get your fucking shoes on with my clients. I tell them to get their shoes on. Yeah. That, yeah. that is the barrier to entry. Get your shoes on, your proverbial or literal shoes. Mm-hmm. Get outside. Yeah. Go for a walk. It's, it's that simple. Yeah. You know, really quick on that, when people think that they're getting, you know, getting a, um, a new fitness plan or a new meal plan or, you know, having a coach or going to a personal trainer or something, they build this big like they have to go do this and then it's almost like oh it sounds like it's too much i don't want to do it right but just getting your shoes on just getting out the door showing up to the gym or to wherever you're supposed to be is 50 percent of it already there you walk through those doors you're already 50 percent there keep going and that's why we have people like you to help cheer us on and coach us on and work with us and hold our hands because people need that accountability and they need somebody giving them the encouragement what i find and i've been in sales for a long time i know you know sales really well What I find is this kind of arc of the narrative as I, as I work with folks and potentially close them, there is such fear, right? People put this strong front on. Mm-hmm. It's not only men, but mainly men, if, if you know what I'm saying, right? Um, yeah. They put this front on as if they don't need help. But after I'm able to slowly chip away at that, you realize that we all do. We just want to be seen, heard, and understood. That is it. So I think um, it takes a ton of courage to even for for me to sit here and talk about different things about my life. And I'm really excited um, to share this for for a very, very long time. I've shared my own mental health struggles. uh, And thank goodness people are buzzing about this. You know, we we, we know there's an issue. We are right on time. Right on time. (laughs) Not a day later, not a moment later. Yeah, And I'll talk more about my story. Um, But that is I think we've been sold a few things that are incorrect. One of them is. Uh, not to go full out. I mean, the theme of FDI is is to go ten out of ten. Yes, like yeah. we are, we are putting the pedal down and going for it. Yes. You know mm-hmm. what? Like, I was listening to this podcast. Um, a, another one, not this one. If, the, if that's okay. Yes. Different, a different one. No, it's not. I'm just <laughs> we encourage. We encourage podcasts. Absolutely. Oh my, oh my god! Gosh. Anything that's gonna empower you, elevate lift you, you up, enrich you, help you grow, and give you the courage that you need. We are all, all about, about that. It. Yeah. We li- support I, it. Thank you. Yeah, I listen. I listen. Um, to them on 2x is that okay yeah we'll be on there one day yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everyone's just banging down the door for us on every platform so just picking and choosing be a little slack yeah yeah we'll have to know about eventually yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh but this uh, i was listening to um a navy seal who uh th- thank you for your service sir if you're listening to this but he was talking about almost nobody has a decision making framework they just noodle and vacillate and don't think about how to make decisions. He says, well, for us, it was critical whether we're going to, you know, pull the trigger, drop the bomb, uh, invade, whatever it might be. We need to figure out how we're going to decide. And almost nobody does that, right? Not that it has to be so extreme, but it could be something as deciding on what to wear for the day. I always wear a black t-shirt, so you're going to see me. With a happy face? With a happy face. Uh, Well, this is a local artist who I'm supporting, so thank you for... Shout out to local artists. We love you. Yes. Yes. the point is, he said, here's the framework that um, you're taught in the Navy SEALs. Number one, figure out how much time you have to glean all the insights and the feedback, right? Biased, unbiased, everything. Let it in. Open your aperture. Take it in. Number two, and almost everybody skips this, decide when you need to decide. Mm-hmm. Do we have 30 seconds, 30 minutes, 30 days, um, which is critical, and stick to that. Boundary the, on that boundary. timeline is so important. No doubt. Draw a line and stick to it. And then the third piece, this is a Jeff Bezosism. I'm sure many other folks have said it before him, but almost every decision is reversible. Yes. Right? So just fucking go. Absolutely. Just go. Let's fucking go. Yeah, just stop, go. stop waiting time. And I love, what did you say about the decision? You said something about the decision. What was that? Please? Decide when you have to decide. Decide when you have to decide. Right, and make that decision. So many people live in a limbo situation where they are afraid 
in speaking of men's mental health, they might be like in some type of a relationship at work or personal relationship where they ne- they know they need to depart from this part of their life, but they're afraid to do so by hurting somebody else who you really truly are harming as yourself by right. not living your true authentic self. And we talk about this quite a bit because anytime that you are not living in your truth or you are denying yourself access to the things that you want to do, which is essentially deciding, it is essentially betrayal to your self-love. Right. And so many people are trying to figure out what that even means for themselves because they don't even know how. One of the things, we surveyed a bunch of our friends and family who are men, and we asked them a, two very important questions. One, we asked them, what do you think of when you hear the topic men's mental health? What comes to mind? That was one of the questions we surveyed. And then the second question that we asked people was, what are the stereotypical ideas around men's mental health that you want to see broken down that exists for today? And we actually took the answers that people had submitted and we put them in the bowl. We're going to unpack them. We're going to talk about them. It's so important (laughs) that we address some of these stereotypes and break them down and also get to the root of how we can allow and empower you know, more people uh, to be able to live their authentic self. No, absolutely. And I just want to put a little disclaimer out there for all of you. Some of the topics we're going to talk about are going to be heart-wrenching, and they might just hit a button with you, but we're not holding back on anything. Here at FDI, we're all about fucking doing it to the extent of helping you and even push you over the edge to make that change and that positive be a positive endorse, en, endorsement in your life is really what I'm trying to say. So we're just going to go straight out and just stick with us. And anything that you hear here on our podcast, please share, because this is a really important podcast that we're doing here with Men's Mental Health. So. Yes. I'm going to pick our first question. Now, while while you're it. picking, I, I wanted to share one quick thing. Oh, yes. yes. So, please. audience, you didn't get to see what happens before this. Um, but what happens before this is basically this, meaning these, these two women are, are living and breathing examples of this, whether it was even walking up and honoring people who we bumped into um, and just sharing sharing who they are unapologetically, authentically with the world, right? So this is not a show. This is kind of, yes, we have microphones and headsets, right. but it's important for everybody to know that this is like a window into who you are. And I'm excited to learn more about both of your stories. How do you get to a point of of realizing who you are? I mean, we, we we've talked about this being friends for years. It's a journey, and and we are we are simultaneous simultaneously map makers and travelers, right? Which which I think is important. That's a that's a Brene Brownism, not a not a Matt Savickism. I'm here for but, it. Yeah, and, and that's the key is that you are doing it all along. I talk right. about this. Are you are you a chef once you read a chef book? Or are you a chef when you get in the fucking kitchen to start cutting it up? Yeah. I waited for a very long time to um, come out to the world that I was a runner. I was allergic to telling people that I ran. And then I told my Physically best friend. Physically or just run, run, run from your problems? Because I Bo- yeah. we, we've, we've unpacked that in a couple episodes how I definitely like to run. Yeah, yeah, uh, both. Um, <laughs> but I was telling a friend, yeah, I think I put in probably – 30 miles a week on my Nike. He's like, what? You're a runner. And it was like only then that I was able to see myself as such. So I think that there's this, there's this interesting tension between, um, I know actions speak louder than words, but, and we'll talk about this. Words are super important. We, we have blunted our ability as a society to communicate. I mean, we've dumbed it down to like smiley face, frown face. Is that your range of emotions? There's so much more. Wow. Right. Well, well, maybe yeah. 140 characters. There is this the other <laughs> end. Of the spe- right, right. There is the other end of the spectrum, which is this long form content. Everybody ingesting Game of Thrones in a night. So it's almost like we've pushed the two ends of the spectrum, and there's no space in the middle for just like standard communication. Right. And that's where a lot of people are struggling. And this was a huge motivator why we wanted to start FDI. So many people don't that. The intention is there, right? You hear people, I wish, I want that. You can see it in their eyes and their soul. We all have trauma. We've all been suffering. But you can see that every ounce of them wants to do this for themselves. They want a healthy relationship. They want to be healthy on the inside. They want to be prideful and successful and happy in the work that they do every day. But people don't know where to start. Specifically, you know, when we did this survey with our friends and family who are males, that was the reoccurring theme. We don't know where to start. Yeah. 
just experiencing their emotions out loud for the first time. My father, you know, dealing, you know, when these big things happen, like death or tragedy or something big, and then everything comes to the surface and people start to feel for the first time. But I hope that we can empower people to start feeling right now. They're only going to support themselves better and their relationships better. We, we definitely are going to empower people and support them 100%. Watching a man hold his emotions back and his feelings back to me is just very heart-wrenching um, as I am, a, I am a mother and I've always been a nurturer. When I see a man holding his emotions back, I just give the permission he can cry. And I've had several men cry in front of me. I have held several men in my arms and just gave them the permission to cry, which they needed for that moment. Yeah. Then they sniff it back up and, hey, I'm, I'm okay. No, you're not okay. <laughs> you're not, and it's okay not to be okay. So yeah. uh, men to release what they're holding inside, frustration, um, fear. They're afraid to communicate and say exactly what's going on in their mind. So I don't know. It's it's it, This is definitely, um, it hits my heart really deep in the subject for sure. Yeah, thank you for sharing. I'm going to open this one question up here, so, okay. Be, be an alpha male. Again, to remind the audience, the we surveyed our family and friends who are male, and we asked them what comes to mind when you think about men's mental health, and what comes to mind when you think about stereotypes against men. So, be an alpha male. Like, be an alpha male. What does that mean, Matt? What, what do you, does that hit a chord when you hear it? Like what it needs to be, we have an image in mind of what it means. Like obviously like there's been gender roles for a long time and be a tough guy, be strong. And I think there's this. like kind of like, like this Phoenix rising of women that's happening. And there's this interesting dynamic where it's more so like alpha yeah. female and yeah. there's a shift happening. And I don't know how that makes men feel, but for the long, longest time, that's been a stereotype is be an alpha male. What does it even mean to unpack what that feels like. I'll, sh I'll share my perspective here and my thoughts and feelings and maybe some tears. Um, I know, All is I know, welcome. No, yes. I know that. Come, <laughs> come as you are. So I, I think I understand it, right? Because every, almost everything that we see, we'll just start with movies. This, this is the archetype. Strong He-Man type man, right? Being, being the kind of... Uh, producer in a way, whether whether physically strong or bringing home, dragging the boar back to the cave. Yeah. That that has been part of storytelling forever. So I don't I don't blame men for thinking that that's what strength means. It it begins on the playground. Um, it's again painting with broad brushstrokes, but typically it's like red team versus blue team battle and and we are trained to win. Someone hoists the trophy. But therein lies like the first kind of deviation from potentially how you feel, act, and think. What if you're not the first person picked? What if you're the last person picked? What if, you're, what if you lose regularly? So I think what you've built here is a space to facilitate these things, and then you can choose how to, dis how to behave thereafter. Right. That's that is it. Thank goodness I had um, a mother still have a mother. I lost my dad. We'll talk about that. Um, who has created unconditional love and support for me and my sister without condition. So my theory is and I'm sure there are clinicians out there who um, might agree, might not agree. If you have one pillar of unconditional love in your life, then you don't have to be anything other than yourself, right? There was no, th thank goodness my mom was able to dance with this um, and was not playing with love as uh, a means to gain respect, action, anything, right? It was not, she was never withholding this. It was like, no matter what you do, I'm here for you. And that comes through in, in words and actions. So I think... What I've noticed, at least in the workplace, um, let me take a quick time out. I, I want to just share some some truth about the first time I met Alex. Oh gosh! Which, <laughs> and, 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 and well, maybe this is even my you know my own bias coming out. I, I guess that's the purpose of this, right? To yeah, share. totally. Um, Send it. <laughs> day one, this person came into the Headspace office and spoke the truth to people in power, and it was a lot of men in power. As opposed to most of us kind of cowering, sir, yes, sir, she would say, that doesn't make sense. I don't agree with that. Why are we doing that? Explain that to me, right? We as the team deserve an explanation right out the gates. There was no on-ramp 
and the world knew like this person is coming to speak truth, speak her truth. Um, and you taught me a lot, so thank you for just bringing it. I mean, I you had never... so much fun working with you too. Oh man, we had <laughs> and a I time. love that you have. You've always been such a big advocate for the truth, and that's one of the reasons why we have you know, found each other and we continue to build together as friends and entrepreneurs. Yeah. And I just think that it's also so important for you to find a community of people that's going to continue to help elevate you because we helped each other out in so many ways. And I yeah. think that there's something so nice about the dynamic between you being, I don't want to say an alpha male, but I would consider you someone who's also very strong in the workplace. You are very strong in your physical, emotional, mental, spiritual well-being. And I guess that's the stereotype that we're breaking down because what we've been told for so long is like, if you are excelling in each of those areas, you just might be an alpha male. But the reality of the situation is, is I wonder if we should be getting rid of that term. We'll talk about that at, at some point. But I love this dynamic between our gender roles and in the workplace and breaking one down and serving up another that historically, you know, was oppressed. And I will always appreciate that about you. And that's the thing. We're truth seekers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I want to encourage more people to be truth seekers for themselves and also recognize that when they see it, too. You, you are a, a, a precious and one of a kind commodity. You have to be you. Yeah. I, I think, as we know... Social media has created this divergence, and the cost of comparison is very real. I live in a community where keeping up, we all do, right? Yes. Where keep, keeping up with the Joneses is suffocating unless you stand strong on what you care about, right? That becomes your character. What are your values? What are your actions that follow suit? And thinking about minimizing what I call the say do gap, right? I, I hope you saw, even in the workplace, behind closed doors, in the shadows, on stage, I, I attempted to minimize those things. Like, what do I care about? Who am I? Here's the list. Work on that, codify it, clarify it, awareness. And then compassion, act in a way in which I'm living those values. So, so back to the alpha male. That begets, obviously that means that there's a beta, there's this duality, right? Alpha and beta. The greatest, and I, and I am honored that I work with dozens of men who probably are, they, they themselves probably consider themselves as alpha males and their producers, um, all sorts of different folks, uh, professional athletes, executives, lawyers, doctors, creators, artists, um, uh, filmmakers, politicians. And the best lesson that I can provide is you have a choice just because you look and have been trained a certain way, you can choose to be what I call a vibrating alpha male. Meaning, if there's another alpha male in the room, the best thing you could do is work with this person and empower them. You might have this carnal desire to battle, so you win and you stand atop the heap. I, I haven't ascribed to that playbook in a long time. Maybe it's because I was not like ever the most physically fit, so I had to be the cheerleader on the side, <laughs> literally and figuratively. Um, but that notion of one plus one equals three, you'll hear that theme, meaning the two of us coming together, we create something more than just me winning and you losing. So building somebody up, yeah. it, it's, it's very challenging for me to say that to another male, yeah. right? But if he sees the way I embody these traits, I think that's, that's the best work that I can do. Wow. We talk about this all the time to encourage each other. Like there's, you know, from a female perspective, a lot of women are jealous of other women. And we are so into empowering and surrounding ourselves by empowering women and yeah. also empowering men. And um, the word that came up before for myself was teamwork, mm -hmm. working together as a team. We're all here to serve each other and help each other and educate each other and be there on that level for people. So working as a team together and not trying to you know, dim somebody's light, basically. You know, we're here to encourage each other. There's no jealousy. There's no, um, I want to do this, I want to do that. We're here to empower each other, Yeah. you know, and encourage each other. When someone's doing well, tell them they're doing a great job. Yeah. Right? I, I read, uh, oh. Yeah. Yes, I just love everything that's being shared right now, just listening. And I just find it so empowering to hear uh, the male perspective because us females, we can have our own version of a, you know, a very surface level version of why that man that we care about is acting this way or doing this, but there's so many more layers to what our initial perception is. And it's because we 
don't know what's underneath the surface and I'm just grateful to have you here to uncover what's underneath the surface because I think clarity and understanding brings better relationships it brings peace it brings harmony and these are the things that we're trying to bridge on this journey with FDI I love it yeah to, to kind of put a point on this uh, I was reading Abby Wambach's book, and she talks about there are only two tactics, and this is talk, you know, talking about team dynamics, could work in the family, workplace, on a champion, championship team. You either are running or you're pointing, right? So you score a goal, you point to all the people who supported you, raise them up. Yeah. This is not me. Yes, I'm hoisting the trophy with you, but this is about us, right? Or run to be there to support the person who just did something great. And I think that takes people talk about ego dissolution. It's that that is a that's an ongoing wrestling that I'm doing with my own ego, as as we know. Um, we're just here for a blip in time. I, my own coach said said this to me the other day. I was kind of caught up on something and. I'm tinkering on this website that I'm launching, uh, and I'm excited for you all to check it out. Yes. And she said, "You're half dead. What are you? What are you worried about? You know?" And I, 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 boom. We and need I was it. Like, we we got to get this person on FBI. <laughs> <laughs> we do. We talk about the Walking Dead have, all the time. Did you hear that? You're half, half dead. dead. You're half, half dead. dead. The Walking Dead. People that are literally walking. You can see they're like just. I just said it today on the way here running to your death or something like that like you're just like running to your death what was their interpretation of being half dead yeah what is that you're 37 you're you're halfway there dude wow. you're halfway there you got maybe 37 years more great years and it was just like you you have you have to hear those things yes. right i mean that's another thing we'll, we'll we'll get there in a minute but this notion of we suck at talking about life and death <laughs> We suck. Like, let's let's be clear. It it is inevitable, and it's not so much what happens in that discussion, but thereafter. What do you, you know? What do you do with this after you realize like we're mere mortals? Exactly. You're born. You're gonna die. It's gonna happen to every single one of us. You're the time that you spent on this earth has to be spent serving others and developing yourself to the highest quality that you were meant to be. And when you can take care of yourself, and it's, I'm going to say it very simple, you just be the best person you can be, values, morals, ethics, treat another person the way that you like to be treated, elevate people, it's that simple. Yeah. Stop the competition, stop the self-sabotage, stop the trying to be the perfect person that you are because we're all imperfectly perfect. It's just amazing when you really dial it down to just being being the best that you can be, yeah. especially for especially for men today. I mean, we're big mental men's mental health advocates, and um, until the day I die, I will always be that. Yeah. Thank you, and thank yeah. you for doing that. Like yeah. we, we we need to speak up for the men. Yeah, you need to carry the torch. Uh, it's it's hard work, and and I always say that right. Like it's it's much easier to numb yourself. It's much more challenging to sharpen your toolkit. And when I say sharp, let, let's be specific, not speak in platitudes. Sharpening your toolkit meaning finding out the nuanced vocabulary to share your thoughts and feelings. Everybody talks about dividing and conquering. It's like, but first we need to come together and codify who we are, yes. why we are, and what we want. And from there, you can divide and conquer. But I think this notion of really double-clicking on what am I feeling? What is it? I'm doing this with a three-year-old now, not any three-year-old, my three-year-old. Yeah. But when she is overwhelmed, there's something, there's, there's, a, there's kind of a classic neuroscience and probably parenting adage called name it to tame it, right? As opposed to, I think most, most parents, at least the ones in my network, uh, they, like my, my daughter walked into the wall. It's not a new wall. It's always been there. Uh, <laughs> most parents say, what's wrong with you? Like the wall is there. We have to go. Hurry up. Stop crying. That's all left brain thinking. A child and most of us are, are full right brain thinking, like heartfelt first. The thing to do is get down to their level, similar as you would with a dog or an animal, and hold them and say literally or figuratively, I see you. I hear you. I've bumped into a wall before and that hurts, right? Be seen and heard first, then I can kind of course correct if there's space, right? That notion of step one, awareness, step two, action thereafter or compassion. To me, that, that, that is the simplest playbook that we have, yes. right? It's definitely an important tool set. It sounds like a lot of parents out there can get a lot of value from that particular way of approaching 
challenge as someone is trying to also figure out who they are. And, you know, at the end of the day, parenting is just a part of the shaping of our existence and how we work through our own trauma and how we become. Let's pull another topic. I'd be curious to see what you pull. All right. So another topic that comes to mind when we think of mental health or breaking down a stereotype around men's mental health. Is traditional male bonding. Okay, that's an interesting one. That's a little foreign for us women. When we think of traditional male bonding, I don't know what you think of, Karen, but I think of like men going Football. and watching sports, Football. drinking, maybe wrestling, I don't know, anger and aggression comes to mind, and then hugging afterwards. Yeah. I, I, it's it's obviously foreign to me. This is just an observer opinion. But what do you think of when traditional male bonding comes to mind? Yeah, I did. Um, I, I've I've I love playing sports. I've never watched sports. My my best friends know the Heat lineups, middle names, and their heights and wingspan. I I, <laughs> I don't. But I I'm 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 happy to sit there with them because that you know meet them on their turf. Um, I think we there's. In my experience, traditional male bonding, there's a tertiary thing going on, meaning let's grab a beer, let's watch the game. It's very rare to sit in a situation like this and have a conversation. It's scary. What do you talk about? The weather, like your feelings, your thoughts? We're always talking about feelings. (laughs) So are you saying men don't get together and just talk about their feelings? Well, I- Almost never. (laughs) I I am regularly, as as y'all know. Um, carry on, sorry. No, 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 no. I, I was just thinking how wonderful this is because this is great for all of the men that are listening to us. That traditional male bonding is just getting together for just being the guys, but really opening up as a human and talking to your best friends about how you're feeling and what's going on in, in life and school and job and parenting and relationships and whatever, just to open up and conversate. People don't do that. And that's one of our very good friends told us last night that the communication level is like dead. There's nothing there. I mean, just dead. No. It's, it's, it's easy and convenient to cheer for the Jets. Go Jets. Yeah. And then, and then you can like. Who's really a Jets fan? Just kidding. I'm I love all my New Year people. Love, love, no, no. But you, <laughs> it's a proxy for right, like you're, you're able to place your feelings in this basket, yeah. which, you know, you're not really in control over if they win or they lose. Oh, ruin my week. Um, I hosted a men's circle in California in my front yard. I had this front yard that was like wasting epic. away. It was, it, was it was epic. I remember when we had the comedy show there. Yeah, yeah, we had a comedy so show awesome. there um, <laughs> with real live comedians. Hilarious. It was, it was amazing. But I also hosted uh, a men's circle on Tuesday evenings, which I don't know if you all know, Tuesday is the shittiest day of the week, I think, because no, <laughs> booze. I had boo- no idea. <laughs> boo- I didn't know me either. You know, Monday you're still I'm like. I'm learning so much, Karen. Right. What about you? I, no, I'm learning a lot. It's like Monday, you're like, you're like, like, well, it's Monday. And then Tuesday, Wednesday's hump day, Thursday's Thursday, Thursday, Friday. Hey, th- what's up with Tuesday? Yeah. Thursday's, yeah. You know Friday, Tuesday Junior. Did. Friday's Friday, right? Monday, you're still suffering from booze blues and you're, you have the weekend glow. Tuesday, uh-huh. I think, is the, mo- the most, actually, to, not, to, not to bring it to this point, but that's the most common day for suicide as a tuesday is tuesday wow um so i hosted it on tuesday wow. i didn't share that yeah. as i welcome yeah, yeah. people over it first started with my friends okay. and i just it actually started as like a music listening party where we would play a new record and listen to it uh, and just enjoy it and i realized that was not that that was the wrong purpose again i was replacing the jets with music. some music right which which is fine, but it wasn't accomplishing my goal, which was to facilitate a confidential and safe conversation. And almost everything, every single time, the same thing happened. New folks who would show up, they would make dick jokes. What are we doing here? We, you know, getting the measuring tape, measure our dicks. Like that was right. that was the joke every time. Variations of that, but mm-hmm. largely that. And then the most amazing thing began to happen. People would share their feelings. And I would have a very simple prompt. Like I wasn't, I wasn't swinging for it. The prompt was, what is showing up for you today? What is showing up for you today? Cause you're deep, you know, you're depersonalizing it. It's not your fault. You're feeling these things. We have 75,000 thoughts. What, what's one of them you can pick out of a soup bowl. Um, possible. <laughs> oh, what? Possible. 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 <laughs> <Or soup>. um, <laughs> 
I choked on a piece of chicken recently, so any any solid foods are scary. So I said soup. <laughs> soup reference. <laughs> soup, soup, soup. Yeah. Uh, smoothies, yeah, yeah good. Neutral soup, bullet, good. safe. Yeah, yeah so anything. <laughs> Puree it. Uh, but that was, and it, it ballooned from my friends. And then we had, as you know, so it didn't turn into a party. I would basically say, like, the purpose of this is not to get fucked up. We're not like smoking and drinking. Uh, you can do that if you want. I'm not supplying that, but we are facilitating a conversation. And I called it a men, men's circle. Yeah. And what happened was we had folks that were young teenagers from around the block. And we had the elders in the community, 84 year olds were there. And it was just, it was almost like Montessori esque, where there was a benefit on both sides. Um, but it got so real. I actually had to take a um, uh, a class to help diffuse issues between men because it got so fiery. Back to this notion of anger, I realized that that is you know again that's a. Do you think it's a default motion or? Emotion? I think it's default. Yeah, right. It's it's. I don't know about default. It's like, you know, you're barking at somebody and that kind of escalates. So when you say men men don't cry. Mm-hmm. I think we make, whether it's a subconscious choice, to either flex up and show our fangs, which is what most most often comes out, um, or not. So I think there's, in some of the coaching that I do, there's this notion of, and we talked about this in the men's circle, strong back, soft front, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's okay to stand up for what you believe in, but you need to be open and curious and loving. I love that. I think it's so beautiful, and I think so... Many people need to hear that message, strong, back, soft, and front. Yeah. yeah Again, like all the dick jokes would, would follow after, right? Talking about soft so front, but like dick jokes. so many dick jokes. So and just, they, they still elicit laughs, but after yeah. the dick jokes, we would get into, you know, conversations well, about that's feelings. Part of, that's part of the num- numbing. To numb yourself as a man, like you're just going to tell like the stupid little jokes, keep it really surface and not even go any deeper. That's like a numbing. That's part of the numbing. Yeah. Right. It's, it's, it's easy. It's easy. Yeah. Another thing that was interesting, if I might share more about For this. Sure. Yeah. There's, a, there's For a lot it. here. Yeah. Pour it <laughs> out. I don't know Let if we're out. running out of tape or. Lay no. We'll so, be here all night. <laughs> let's go. So um, another thing that's interesting, potentially related to this notion of traditional male bonding it's probably been much broader as, as we like zoom out. I've noticed that we are so um, directed by context and archetypes in our life, not necessarily men, but all of us, right? Whether it's like a teacher student paradigm or uh, boss employee, there are things that are just largely not available to us and our personality, which is very strange. I, I as a parent, can behave a certain way with my child. But then when my parent, my mom walks in the room, the the paradigm flips. So it's almost as if we're like bouncing from room to room in our head and we are a different self, which is, you know, again, just like the notion of observing this, it's not necessarily bad or good or wrong. I'll, I'll give you another kind of very clear example. If a friend of mine shows up, uh, he knows the code. He lets himself in. I say, you know, grab a drink, serve yourself, make yourself comfortable. If he shows up with somebody else I don't know, his partner, spouse, another friend that I don't know, I immediately jump into action like I'm a host and I'm a caretaker. It's such a, it's just a funk, this funky duality of like nuance that flips us into uh, the, we're, we're so context dependent, right? And I think that's a little bit of the issue where it's like, what is the playbook I'm de- going to deploy? Because I don't think people know, hey, how do how do I want to show up? Yeah. How do I not so reactive, but purposefully? How do I want to show up? I heard Gary V. He said, you know, endlessly Gary Vaynerchuk, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He he does these um, AMAs, ask me anything, and he records uh, ahead of time and after all of his talks because he, there are so many folks coming up who who ask ask great questions. And he almost did like a timeout thing. He's like, y'all, everyone is asking basically the same thing. Mm -hmm. And my answer is basically the same, which is go into a cocoon for 36 months, work on something and emerge. Go fucking act. Go do a thing. Hopefully that choice is 
going to take you on a personal journey, right? Because it's not necessarily the best if we just go away for 36 months and just try to go develop a business, right? We're forgetting the inside. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that and just isolating yourself. Sometimes you do have to isolate yourself and be quiet within your own sanctuary of your home, your space, whatever it is, to just listen to yourself. Just stop and listen to your own breath. Listen to the thoughts in your head. Journal some things down and look yourself in the mirror. We've talked about this before, and it's kind of reiterating, but the truth be told, just be quiet. Yeah. Just just be quiet and let everything come to surface and deal with it. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's right. When he says cocoon, it's, it's in yeah. service of action. Yes, definitely. Right, not just it. go to sleep. Yeah. Little bear. For sure. Yeah, no. We don't wanna we don't want people to also isolate themselves either to a point where obviously we know the repercussions of what it means sometimes when people are feeling the weight of everything else that's going on from ego to stereotype to some of these labels, right? It causes people to go into a place where they isolate themselves, which can actually have the negative effect. And I think that, yeah. you know, personally I have Um, had multiple people that have been in my life where they have battled with suicidal thoughts. Um, I've had people that I love very dearly actually also um, try and take their own lives in certain points of my experience. And so it's this fine line of how we talk about isolation and knowing that we need to go away and sort things out or, but also reaching out to those people to make sure that their mental health is okay. That's the key. So For everyone who doesn't know, y'all know I have four children, and my son Michael took his own life 27 months ago, May 24th, 2020. So suicide was something he had in his mind since he was probably 12. And even with clinical help and therapies, he hid a lot of that, that, those things inside him. So I know as a mother what he was dealing with inside his mind. But the more he had he talked to other people and voiced what was on his heart, that's the importance here. So medical disclaimer, just putting it out there. Um, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a clinical therapist, but as a mother and as a human, if anyone tells you or says that they wanna take their own life, you have to tell somebody else to help them. Um, Suicidal thoughts are normal. We all have probably thought about them. I have several times in my life and actually attempted my own life at the age of 17. What always kept me going forward was I know that tomorrow the sun's gonna come up and it's gonna be another day. And that type of mindset has always been driven within me. And I know with Alex as well, since she was a little girl, her father said that she was just like that ball buster coming into the room and being like, I have a question, this is the way it is. When you were built a certain way, that's how you are, but you can always look for those talents that are inside you. Mine is my mindset, obviously. And I just, you know, stood strong with it. I've been around a lot of men with mental health issues, from my father to my son to a lot of my exes, a good friends of mine and things. And just with that knowledge of what these men had so painfully inside their head, they weren't able to express themselves. Um, you know, my son, for one, just couldn't talk. He'd go, uh, uh, and he just couldn't get it out. So there's a definite need for men to communicate to other men, friends, whoever. Just get it out of what you're feeling, right? Yeah, yeah. Thank you both for sharing. Like that, that's that's the first step in this, right? Talking, it's just like you have to talk about it in whatever way it shows up. Um, and it's hard. It's really, really hard. I think if you don't have a practice of sharing your feelings or even understanding them, it, understanding them is a big one right it, it, I think that's the, the lifelong journey right to understand your thoughts understand the mind learn when it's serving you craziness and then learn when you know it's clear we we learned about this a lot yeah. as we study meditation and mindfulness that these are passing thoughts they're racing they're going by like a car and once we start to understand that concept a little bit where we don't chase the car every single time and I just think that that's a practice of of mindfulness and meditation is a really strong vehicle for that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it could be all sorts of different meditations. Absolutely. Right? I know, I know, I know on a previous, uh, show you were talking about that, right? So I think there's, however it shows up, whatever this practice is for you, you know, this notion of like fine tuning your, your voice, um, and you owe it to yourself. Yeah. I mean, that's, that is, that is the practice. Uh, I'll share two quick thoughts. Um, I lost my older brother to suicide uh, July 4th, 1992. And I had no tools, no, I was I was completely spiraling out of control. Um, I didn't even give myself permission to really, really process because I was so worried about everybody else. 
um, and that's no fault of anybody else's. He wrote a letter to himself for 365 days uh, leading up to it. So I have a, a pretty clear count of what he was thinking. Right? He, he put it on paper. He was at peace, yeah. which, is, which is very, it's tough to, you know, it's tough for me to even reconcile now. I'm, I, I'm working through it. Um, but he was at peace. His name was Joshua Star Saverick, uh, a brilliant writer, a star tennis player, um, and my big brother. So I wanted to honor him and just share his story. Matt, thank you for that. Thank you yeah. very much for that. Suicide's not an easy one. And as much as we want to reverse it, that's the one thing we can't change. Yeah. But one thing that we can do is speak always in honor of that person. They're always still around us and to share their stories in hopes of somebody else. And I know your brother's at peace. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Um, one other story, uh, not really related, but kind of bouncing back to this notion of alpha male or aggression or anger. And this is, a, I don't know, it just popped in my brain, so I'm going to share it. Yeah, that's what we do uh, here. Let's go. Yeah. So we were at a, uh, a friend's bachelor party. We were at a music festival. And my, my best friend, uh, we'll call him Bob. That's not his name. But Bob was encouraging me to follow The Bachelor to this one show he wanted to go to. I wanted to go to my other, my, my favorite band. And I, I think I was being, I was kind of overextending myself, right? Like I was best friends with Bob. Bob was dear friends with this other person. And it was kind of a riff, right? It wasn't, we weren't scrapping, but I wanted to go here. And it was like, let me go. And he said, no, you should be, you're here on this dude's bachelor party. You should, you know, that's the right thing to do. Do the right thing. It's the right thing to do. Um, and it got really heated, like very, very fiery. It was at the end of the festival. We were exhausted. I'm sure dehydrated. Um, and so much so, my friend Bob got in my face to the point, if you were to watch this, you would think that the next step was for me to act in the same, you know, mirror his action, right? Yeah. Swing or flex or whatever it was. And after years of practice, um, in an instant, I was able to feel that unbelievable rage fire in my belly, um, feel myself like acting as if I'm going to do something, push him, punch him. And I hugged him and his like mind exploded because he's like, you know, he was like t so taken aback. What had happened was I felt that it was, it was a very, very long time since I had experienced this level of rage. So I was in gratitude to him for allowing me to practice by not acting and, tr and transforming this rage yeah. into love, compassion. And I that's still, beautiful. yeah, I, 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 it would, and it was, I think that's the purpose of practice, yes. right? Which is like, you, you just don't know when it comes up. We could talk about getting cut off in uh, while driving Traffic, or you yeah. know breaking a nail or <laughs> waiting in line every time i see matt i break a nail okay i just have to get it off my chest we just that's how that's <laughs> we just while out i mean what can I say? <laughs> just wall out yeah. just gonna nail that one in the head there yeah, exactly. <laughs> you got you got nine more um yeah exactly 19, 19 if there. you count the call if my guy the we'll toes. get it fixed yeah <laughs> But that, but that was, he was so bewildered by this experience and he still talks about it. Fast forward to a point where, and, and, and Bob is the most macho alpha male archetype friend of mine. Fast forward a couple of years, he started having panic attacks as a consequence of stress. And he told me, he's like, I, I just don't know what to do, where to go what he was saying is I'm asking for help. And, yeah. um, and I, I think like that's, that's what you can do. If you feel like you can't give anything, that's what you can give. You can speak your truth and be there for people. Yeah. That is enough. I think we've, we've been ex like we, the world expects us to do so much. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of this nuance between fucking doing it and fucking being it. Mm -hmm. yes. I think there's that, right. There's that kind of duality. It's okay just to be, um, have y'all read the five love languages? Oh yeah, yeah, I read it. Three it's been times. a while, but they say that your love language changes 
a little yeah, oh, yeah. over time. It's probably a good time for me to look it up. Mine's again. still the same. I'm just time. Time is, time is my love language. Spending time with people. I can't get enough quality of it. Time. Quality, quality time. Quality time. I'm a quality time kind of chick. Will, will you all share <laughs> what the five are for oh. the audience? Oh, well, we'll do it together. Yeah, yeah. So quality time is yeah, one. Quality time. Um, words of affirmation. Yep. yep. Physical touch. Yep. Yep. Alex is going to get them all. Gift giving. Gifts. What's the other one? Acts of service. Acts of That's service. it. Oh, I'm big on that. So these are the five. I, The first time I read it, I thought quality time was like throwaway. I was like. That's not that's not a thing. <laughs> yeah, like, obviously, like, it wasn't. but all the women are like, that's the most important one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Better no. be around. But that's the, but that's the interesting thing yeah. where it's like we we believe that what we want men. I'll talk on behalf of men. This is what the yes. book says, and, and I'll kind of layer my own experience on, right? I think men believe that physical touch is what they want. Suck me, fuck me, then I'll be happy. Yeah, yeah. What most men I think really want is words of affirmation. Yes, you are kind you are thoughtful you're being a good father right you support me you're listening i think that's what we really really want without knowing it um but anyway so this notion of quality time i always thought was like a tr- throwaway i thought there were four plus this other one and <laughs> the I, extra I, one I, I, matt this is the extra one i don't know i'm just trying to share my you know <laughs> I the, love this. the extra one <laughs> now i realize that that probably supersedes all of them like in, in this coaching space, I realize that people, after they, after they get over the hurdle of like, I don't need help, I'm an expert. Everybody, every top performer has had a coach. We can list them all, right? Once they're over that hump, that notion of just being with another person with unconditional love and presence, it's, it's enough. I am super choked up on this because unconditional is so important. We society puts so much condition on everything how you're supposed to be how you're supposed to act what you're supposed to say what you're supposed to wear it's a certain thing but when it's unconditional unconditional love you can just be yourself 100 percent. yes open at the table just open-hearted that's that's what we're all about in fdi yeah let's pull another topic and see what we have that was so inspiring to hear so much so much value yes so another topic that people wrote in oh (laughs) I've probably fueled this stereotype before in one relationship or another, but um, so what do people think of when they hear men's mental health or what's a stereotype around mental m- mental health is be a better communicator. That's essentially what we're all talking about right now, which is going back to what you were saying about quality time. Yeah. That's the opportunity to communicate how you feel, what's really, really going on without the game in the background, without the drinking, without the music, these are the times when we're completely stripped away from all of those different things that are blocking us from surfacing who we are, what we believe, and how we actually feel. We have to allow ourselves those kind of moments. But I do think that it's in, this is an interesting one because I, I think that in my experience working in very male-dominated, high-growth tech organizations – it's, it's typical that there's obviously a lot of uh, heavy leadership at the top that is male. And so you can put the dots together around men being really good communicators in the workplace because they're not emotional, right? They're all about business. They make it happen, which is why you see a lot of it being top heavy that way. But then when it comes to relationships, I, <laughs> you know, I, I've had a couple of girls night out where we kind of rip on this topic about the person that we're dating or seeing at the time is not communicating or they're communicating all over the place or they're all in at one point sharing all of their feelings pouring it out this whole real moment and then the next day they call you and it was too much and they can't go back from that because (laughs) too much was said too much communicating happened so it like scares the shit out of the people i don't know karen you uh yeah it's just i I have some experience of this (laughs) maybe recent Uh, yeah yeah, recent experience where in a relationship type of thing things are going very well and it's feeling like coupley like you're becoming a couple and things are going well and you know you're taking time for each other and doing sharing share actually sharing quality time sharing space sharing conversation Mm -hmm. sharing holding hands and just walking down the street exercising together nice things and all of a sudden I need to I need to step back. This mm-hmm. is too much. Mm-hmm. You're you're too and much. And then radio silence. And radio silence. Crickets. And nothing. we're like, what, what just, just happened? happened? Like what just happened? Like how, how can you be with somebody and continue to grow? And then and then they say to you, well, we can't go backwards because the two of us together are only going to move forward together. But I need to step back right now. I need to I need to just 
step back when it was all going so well? What, like, why does a man self sabotage himself in that situation? I don't know this person. I don't know anything about the story. Um, or from your experience, uh, maybe I'm sorry, from you or friends or yeah, anything, I, mean, like, I assume that us. there's probably a pattern here. Okay. Um, with them, not with you. Yeah. Which is, it's a shame. I I, th- I think most people, it's it's not not to um, simplify it, but I what I often see is this notion of when relationships get to the labeling phase, met, uh, generally women want to understand where are we in space who are we right <laughs> yeah exactly um, and then and then men you're either with me or you're not yeah <laughs> i think men bail when that when that happens so i think it's it, it sounds like uh, i'd love to hear more we could we could talk yeah. about it sometime but that's um i assume there's a pattern i assume the pattern includes this notion of playing house get to a certain point pull the ripcord and that's out of fear. I mean, I don't think people have any clue what they're looking for or what they're getting into. This notion of like having fun means that they're not really there, there or committed. Yeah. Yeah. I think. I think so. Just kind of like doubling down on this communication topic. I'll share about. I'll share my experience with my brother. I lost my dad unexpectedly before my wedding, and I swept all of the stuff under the rug. You know the the lumpy rug where mm-hmm. we sweep all our shit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it just I was tripping over the rug and it wasn't serving me. Um, I typically would spiral into anger and rage, right? Which is not the best version of me. And I mean, you know me. I I, I don't I don't think that the the modern day me is no longer that. But I, we're not perfect. That was once me. So what I noticed is this notion of, and I hear this with alcohol, it's classic, like, oh, just take the edge off. I I might say something unpopular right now. I think we're using substances incorrectly. Amen. I'm all about people partying, right? If there's something to celebrate or you're honoring something. But this notion of the steady drip of fill in the blank, ice cream, donuts, alcohol, vape pen, and I'm no saint. No. I mean, I, I enjoy these things as well. I see that halo over your head. A <laughs> 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 little cricket, but <laughs> yeah. still see it. But it's, it's the no, yeah, like people yeah. talk about micro dosing, right? I feel like we're micro dosing yes. alcohol. We are micro dosing these substances as opposed to macro dosing them. Macro dose them, have an experience, get back to work, get back to your life, as opposed to the steady drip of wow. multiple glasses of wine a night multiple blunts, whatever, whatever people are into. Um, and I don't know if we're going to veer off into the realm of psychedelics, but for me, I'm firmly in the camp of this notion of a macro dose to have an experience. And this notion of a micro dose, a steady drip probably is appropriate in some context, but I think like that often is blunting the edges. The purpose is not to blunt the edges. The pur- purpose is to sharpen your saw, right? Really lean into these things, really investigate, which is the essence of communication. Yeah. What are you really, really saying? When you say that, are you saying this? What do you think about this? Let's talk about that. You know, even, even if you have to manufacture some of those guide rails, I think it's critical to do something like that where you're clarifying and codifying. Even if you're asking those questions, tell me more. Yes. What do you think about this? Let's dream together, right? Where you're on the same, where it feels as if you're on the same side of the table, as opposed to someone feeling like, whoa, 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 I am not adept at sharing these things. So I'll just clam up and shut down and bail. Yeah. Or use substances to numb that situation and just move on. Just. It's the, it's the core of like disembodiment. Yes. If, if you're not feeling your feelings or understanding the interplay between your thoughts, actions, and feelings, do we, are we really leaving, living this harmonious life? Yeah. I, I wasn't. You know, I didn't feel balanced. I didn't feel in harmony. The gap between say and do or values, my character was all over the board. Integrity is a scary word for people. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And nobody wants an accountability coach. Right. But if you do, I'm here. Yes, I love that about you, Matt. Thank you so much for sharing all of your expertise. 
your heart, your experience, your knowledge, your love and passion for serving other people. I'm so excited that you were able to come on this podcast, and I know people are going to be wanting more. Matt, thank you for everything, your vulnerability, your honesty, opening up your heart, sharing about you as a man and things that you've gone through and admitting that you're not perfect. A lot of men have this identity crisis of um, they have to be a certain way. You know, the way that they look and the way that they've their posture is. But you really just open up that door for men to just be like, wow, it's okay. I can look myself in the mirror. It's okay the way I'm feeling and just be more vulnerable to themselves. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to do more time, more topics. If people want to get in touch with you, Matt, how can they get in touch with you? I'm not really on social media, so that might be challenging. I uh, love check, that for check. you. I love that. Website, email, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My website is matthewsavert.com. I love it. And you go by Coach Matt. That's what they call me. I love it. Thank you so much, Matt, for everything and for being on the show with us. And if you think that there's any parting words that you think people could take from this, what do you think is going to come from the heart? Yeah, let's see. I have billions, but I'll leave you with this. I think the greatest lie we've been sold is this notion of 50-50 in relationships. You need to take 100% accountability for the way in which you want to show up in relationships the relationship with yourself and the relationship with the world around you. If, if I, if I behaved in any sort of 50, 50 way in our relationship, it, it creates imbalance. If I did that with my family, my wife, my mom, my best friends, that psychological sludge needs to be deleted. So I show up fully and ask for feedback. If I'm not honoring you, if I'm not serving you, if I'm letting you down, you have to let me know in a safe space. So people just let it rip. They let me know, hey, thank you for showing up or no thank you, but at least I know where I'm at. Exactly. You have to fucking do it and speak up and find a way, which is how it all ends up becoming full circle. Thank you, Matt, so much. Thank you, Matt, so much. Thanks, everybody who's listening in. We hope you enjoyed this episode. We will definitely have more of Matt Saverick on here. He shared where you can find him as far as his coaching services go, and we really appreciate you, and we will see you next time. Peace and love. FDI at every day, guys. Mwah. Mwah.